It's 2021 and Super Nintendo World is upon us. And all of us are gathering our passports and collectively disappointingly sighing because we can't leave this country to go visit this awesome place because look at it. It's so cool. Look at Super Nintendo World, man. I can't believe how awesome this place is gonna be. It's true like games to life because you get these wristbands and you can punch blocks and everything. And then the wristbands are amiibo you take home. So I mean like, I can't wait to go. Honestly, I, I really can't wait to go. They have, dis it looks like disgusting food. Mamma mia. But otherwise, it looks super cool. They're about to debut two of their most high-tech costume characters that Universal's maybe ever done before, save like the Secret Life of Pets puppets, which are these really beautiful high-tech, you know, animatronic kind of hand-controlled rigs. Now we're about to get Universal diving into the articulated, voiced over interactive costume character meet and greet with Mario and Luigi at Super Mario World. And that got me excited, and it also got me wondering, What's been going on with Mario's costumes these past couple decades? Mario's been around for a while, right? I mean, 1983. I, I was born in 1987. Mario's older than me. So they've had to have some Mario appearances, right? <laughs> and what kind of dangerous rabbit hole could that be? Well, it turns out it wasn't a rabbit hole. It was a slimy green pipe and was full of weird Marios. Let's go down it right now. What's going on, Mario fans? It's Dan here, and we're about to take a look at the evolution of the Mario costumes in and out of theme parks over the past three decades. Let's -a go. It's almost like Mario just followed the same lineage as, as Mickey when it came to costume characters because he began as nothing more than a unitard with a, with a, with a mask on. It was just a, a thin set of overalls and then just like a hat mask thing. And, um, <laughs> and uh, he looks a little bit more like the drummer from Chuck E. Cheese than he does a plumber as seen here in 1986 at the Super Mario-a-thon. Uh, with Jason Bateman, the, the Bateman children, here enjoying Mario. But it's, it, I mean, like, it's it's just, it's just like, it's a guy, it's like, hey, Mario here. I wonder if he talked, it'd be so great if he did. And then, only a few years later in 1989 to pivot to something so miraculous and so spectacular as a Mario ice capades out of nowhere, like a left hook. It was, it got so epic that they televised this thing, all right? They made a Mario special full of celebrities at the time, including, I believe, Alyssa Milano. And the character designs of these things are really bad. These look like the costumes that you would see in Times Square. You know, Princess Peach looks like a character design from a Rick and Morty cartoon. Like, there is just the strangest lines, the oddest definition. King Koopa is just a dude. He's just a guy. What is it about interpreting Mario into another medium outside of a video game that just confuses Nintendo so much? This is so weird. And Mario and Luigi fly in, you know, Mario and Luigi's powers flying in. Luigi uses a gun to kill a Goomba. <laughs> it's a Luigi bazooka. Then, just a year later in 1990, we have the Super Mario Brothers tournament in Seoul. I don't understand how half of these got approved. Where is Mario's body in this? Whoa. This poor boy is terrifying. Mario ate the mushroom and it only worked on his head. <laughs> and this little boy just ate a piece and he's super concerned. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I forgot this was behind me for a second. <laughs> Meanwhile, over stateside, Nintendo America, it's 1990 and the Nintendo Championship is on. And what we get is, it clearly looks like they went to a mascot building company and they're like, hey, we need a Mario mascot. And they kind of did their shtick, right? Uh, mascots have a huge head. Uh, you know, baseball mascots, there's that one that's got a baseball on his head. What's that one? Just the baseball, he's a mascot. He's a, he's a baseball. He's just a baseball, baseball guy, baseball bill. It's just a big head on, on a bodysuit. And so we really kind of, Mario loses a neck, but what he gains is a perm. <laughs> Mario's hair is luscious. 
in this version of the costume. Uh, and this Mario stuck around for, for quite a while, uh, in, into the early 90s. He's appearing in pictures in Nintendo Magazine, events. These Mario costumes in general are designed for convention runs. Whoop. Let me pause the video real quick to tell you guys about the shirt I'm wearing, because a lot of you guys have been asking, and these shirts come from a really great shirt company called The Lost Bros Trading Co. They're kind enough to send these shirts my way and keep me looking good in the video, so you can head over to lostbrostradingco.com to pick up a shirt today. Okay, unpause. We're the Mario Brothers, and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. And once again, Nintendo is clueless when it comes to the translations of Mario outside of the video games. So they treated us to this variety show as cartoon hybrid show with two old schlubby, dirty New York City plumbers, and they really leaned into stereotypes here, mostly about the Mario Brothers loving Italian food. You have a little piece of spaghetti on your overalls. And you have a little bit of spaghetti sauce on your shirt, as usual. Which really does a great job of highlighting how little being Italian has to do with one of the most iconic video game Italian plumber characters in the history of mankind. <laughs> The Super Mario Brothers movie, man. The power to rule the universe. Get me the rock! Come and get it, lizard breath! I feel like executives are like, hey, Bob Hoskins, man, he can hold down a role. And so they're like, give him John Leguizamo and throw him in suspenders. We're sending him to dino space. <laughs> of what this movie was. This movie was the strangest thing I've ever bore witness to. You guys are so disappointed when like Hermione doesn't, you know, like have breakfast with an elf in like the third Harry Potter movie because that's not, you know, whatever. And th this was just a true abomination for anyone who understood what Mario was or did. It's. I guess in the hearts of all of us, we assigned our own stories to the legend that was the plumber Mario. And uh, this one took this route and was not a success. Was not, did not, did not get the one up. Did not get the mushroom. Name, Mario. Last name. Mario. Okay, How many Mario's are there between the two of you? There's three. It's, it's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. The Nintendo 64. It confused a lot of us. It had three holes, three, three things to hold on the controller. But what it also gave us was this. It's it's a, a little bit of a redesign from the one that we've been seeing uh, for the couple years you know prior. Uh, and, and all these, you know, promotional events and whatnot. What upsets me the most about this costume is that Mario is wearing white gloves, but they're dirty and he's a plumber. Those are poop gloves, bro. He's touching the boss with his poop gloves. That's so gross, man. Who, 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 who proved that? <laughs> like these are just someone's gardening gloves. That's a choice. Yeah! Yeah! After this monstrous creation, there was quite an appropriate response to Mario's appearance at conventions for a while. And that was this adorable little, you know, three foot tall Mario animatronic puppet that started to appear at conventions from like 1996 well into the 2000s that was this beautifully articulated stout little character that matched up kind of perfectly to the height of the humans around it and it was interactive. Uh, my name's Victor, what's yours? Hello Victor, uh, I'm a Mario. Yeah, we know that. In addition to this Mario puppet, they also made a Wario puppet. We interact with the crowds and promote all the stuff that was going on, all the new games. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. This is like the Lumiere puppet in that Enchanted Tales with Belle. This kind of mystifies you a little bit and catches your imagination. It's got a hard plastic head and, a, and like a foam fabric body with, again, hard shoes. And the gloves were articulated because a puppeteer was behind that black cloth, kind of controlling the, 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 the puppet uh, you know, through various kinds of animatronic rigging, which uh, resulted in a really cool finished look. Me and you, and me. 1999, Super Smash Brothers commercial. That was a fun commercial, right? 
where a bunch of costume characters beat each other up. It was super fun to watch. It was super entertaining. And then they continued to use these costumes for a few years in other commercials, like the Mario Kart commercial. Fast forward to the next video game release of Super Mario World on the Game Boy in 2001, and this time we get a super chubby-cheeked Mario. It looks like he's storing two one-up mushrooms in each cheek. <laughs> Mario Party 4 comes out and they drop a commercial that is, you know, <laughs> it's got Mario on a roof, it's got Mario in skis, it's all those, you know, wacky mini games. Mario Party was intense, all right? The, the welts that we all got on the middle of our palms from that, from, you know, from some, those mini games, all right? Th this commercial perfectly encapsulated the violence that was Mario Party 4. <laughs> Super Mario Sunshine's commercial, you know, we get that regular M Mario look that we're used to for these Nintendo commercials, but he's rigged in that flood mechanism from the game, and it's really beautifully built, and he's all, you know, on wires and flying around with the water because it's a feature in the game, but it's a pretty cool commercial. Nintendo kind of sticks to this trend of making commercials for their games using these costume characters, and it really pays off. It pays off time and time again, because I remember every single one of these. It's been KCL Productions that's been behind the creation of all of these costume characters. And it's a kind of fun process with uh, a bubble foam filling molds. It's a really cool design. It kind of brings the eyes more center and with more color, with a colorful pupil layer and that, you know, that glint in the eye. It looks like a cartoon brought to life. I think so far this captures Mario the best way. Attending in promo events was an entirely different looking Mario that got his first look in the early 2000s when Sonic joined the Nintendo team and got a game released on a Nintendo platform. And this big marketing push started happening across the globe where Mario and Sonic were seen together out in public, which meant that there were lots of uh, interesting Mario's designed by marketing teams uh, by <laughs> different Nintendo uh, divisions around the world. The size of the head that they put on these Sonic costumes is terrifying. It's like the, <laughs> it has the proportions of the alien from the Aliens franchise. It's this mutantly large, long tubular head. Ugh, it's too much, it's too much. In 2014, Mario finally gets a really impressive looking costume that translates the character in a ways that you haven't seen done outside of Disney parks, truly. it's a really respectable take on the Mario brand. They sculpt his head really truly to match the modern 3D Mario, but they proportion in a way with a custom built and foamed out body structure to make the character proportionately accurate. It, it becomes suddenly a very warm and, and non-confusing thing for your eyes. It just looks like the Mario you're used to seeing on screen just bigger in, in real life. It's, it's actually incredibly impressive. And they're maintaining the costume like you would see them maintain at any kind of Disney park, you know, costume character warehouse. This is a beautifully meticulously kept. The gloves are always white. He's always, you know, styled and crisp and, you know, looking good and they keep modifying this character design it becomes it sort of becomes the baseline of all the Mario designs moving forward in 2017 with Super Mario Odyssey they took the face and kind of brightened it up a little bit with some fresher colors maybe a, a happier look in the mouth and in the cheeks and in the brow and of course you've got to have you know Cappy there on top of his head and it continues to deliver and read really beautifully. Anytime I see a picture of this new modern Mario, I'm always kind of amazed by how perfectly executed the design really was. It's a, it's a really, really cool costume. Super Nintendo World is a big deal, right? And so we need to step up our game when it comes to Mario and Luigi costume characters. The, the costumes for the whole gang, quite honestly. And Nintendo and Universal Studios really did that in 2021. This first look tour that we got of Universal Studios, Super Nintendo World, L Luigi and Mario costume character come in and they interact with you. You can see their mouths move and you can hear Mario and Luigi's dialogue is coming from their costume character. This is like the Mickey, talking Mickey meet and greet that Disney got rid of. Universal Studios is reviving that. Like we're gonna use that technology. We're gonna blow some minds. It doesn't look like the Toad or Princess Peach costumes, which are both quite stunning in terms of all the other costumes we've seen. 
the toad is so short, so tiny. What, what, what sized human is inside this costume? <laughs> I can't believe how small toad is. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> but Mario and Luigi can talk to you. I'm super excited to see what this kind of technology is used for and how it's developed and how it grows uh, in future costumes and what other characters we can start to interact with just out and about without it being glued to like a donkey or turtle talk kind of situation, you know, locked into a wall with the cast member hidden away. So there you go, Super Mario World. No, Ooh. there you go, Super Nintendo World. It's coming, it's opening. You can meet Mario, Peach, Toad, and you've just saw the terrible, horrible history that they had to endure to get to the beautiful, and really the world is beautiful. It's, it's, it's absolutely stunning how they're able to translate it. And these costume characters look really great. And that's, um, that's the evolution of Mario. Let me know in the comments which are your favorite versions of Mario. Let me know if you've ever got to meet Mario at any events and, and conventions and, and you know mall release parties. <laughs> Share, share your pictures with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. As always, guys, thanks for watching. You rock. They must rescue the princess. Luigi! Alien species escaping. And make it safely back. Later. Alligator to our world. Are you all right? Before time runs out. Brothers, this ain't no game.